Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the seventh Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Anthony Egan. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the seventh Sunday of Easter. As we prepare to celebrate this Eucharist, let's call to mind our sins and ask God for mercy and forgiveness. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask this of Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on Lord earth peace, peace to people of the world. We, we praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, so that we who believe that the Saviour of the human race is with you in your glory may experience, as he promised, until the end of the world, his abiding presence among us, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter stood amongst the brethren, the company of persons who was in all about 120, and said, Brethren, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who was guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered amongst us and was allotted his share in this ministry. For it is written in the book of Psalms, his office let another take. So one of the men who have accompanied us during this time that the Lord Jesus went in and, among, in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day he was taken up from us, one of these men must come with us as a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Lord, who knowest the hearts of all men, show which one of these two you have chosen to take up the place in this ministry and apostleship, from which Ju Judas turned aside, to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was enrolled with the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
The response to the psalm, the Lord has fixed his throne in heaven. The Lord Lord has fixed fixed his his throne throne in heaven. heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all within me his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. The Lord has fixed his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong his mercy for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far from us does he remove our transgressions. The Lord has fixed his throne in heaven. The Lord has fixed his throne in heaven, and his kingdom is ruling over all. Bless the Lord, all you angels. Bless his mighty power, fulfilling his word. The Lord has spoke his throne in heaven. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No man has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us. And we have seen and test... Sorry. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his own spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son as Saviour of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he is God. So we know and believe the love God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. I will not leave you orphans, says the Lord. I will come back to you and your hearts will rejoice. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself, that they also may be consecrated in truth. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Time is out of joint. O cursed spite, that ever I was born to set it right. 
Shakespeare's Hamlet, as Hamlet realizes he has to pursue his father, father's murderer. During the feast of the resurrection, after ascension, are you surprised perhaps by what I just said? Actually, if you think about it, we are celebrating Easter and the ascension in a time that is out of joint. When we look around us, do we see life renewed? Or are we still in the long Good Friday? I suspect many people are wondering what happened to Easter this year. And now we're trying to get our heads around the ascension. Time is indeed out of joint. And if you look at the readings today, we see that they too are out of joint. I mean, we start off with an account of the early church trying to resolve the problem that Judas' suicide has caused. Trying to reconstruct the Twelve, the new tribe of Israel that Jesus himself selected. And then the second reading, it's all about John reminding the Christian community years and years after the resurrection that they should love each other and that those who abide in love are in God. And just when you think things aren't out of joint, look at the gospel. This gospel passage is part of Jesus' farewell discourses before the passion, before the resurrection. So indeed, even our readings suggest that time is out of joint. Another thing that struck me as I reflected on these readings was the way in which our lives are out of joint. Think about it. A few months ago, we could go to the movies. Now we can't. And somehow, today's readings remind me of a very fine film I saw in the days before the lockdown. A South African Dutch co-production called An Act of Defiance, a drama about the great Rivonia treason trial, focused on the advocate Bram Fischer, who was the defense counsel for Mandela and the group who were on trial, who were facing the death penalty. It's a very brilliant film, beautifully acted, full of important moral and social questions, and a profound reflection on love. To a very great degree, the film suggests that Bram Fischer was able to achieve the virtually impossible through the love and support of his family and through his love and support for his comrades. There's a wonderful scene in it too, which is supremely ironic. As you all know, at the end of the Rivonia trial, everyone expected, they expected conviction, which they got. But what they didn't expect was that they would get life imprisonment instead of the death sentence. And so when the judge proclaims life imprisonment, a character who is in the court gets up and runs down a corridor outside to the crowd and silhouetted through the shadows of the corridor, you see this figure waving her hands and she declares, life, life, and the crowd go wild. If you think about it, it's ironic. They've been sentenced to life imprisonment, which is not exactly a victory, but under those circumstances, it was. How does this link in to our readings for today? Go back to the readings. Go back and look at them again. They are all about resurrection, and they all remind us that resurrection doesn't mean an end to all our worries, an end to all sufferings, an end to all distress. These readings remind us that even in the midst of chaos, there is life. Even in the midst of death, there is the promise of a future. Jesus is anticipating his execution, and yet, he is telling them 
to carry on. Carry on. Live as if we are free. Live as if you are in the reign of God already. Why else do you choose another member of the Twelve? Unless, even in the midst of persecution, you are committed to the proposition that Christ is truly risen. Risen and ascended. So what do we make of it today? I think today, during this time, which is out of joint, we can say with great confidence that even in the midst of confusion and suffering, of sickness and death, God's presence is with us. God's presence that renews us, that makes us ready to go out and renew institutions like the Twelve. Go out and love one another. And in that sense of love, even in the midst of all the confusion, we feel the risen Christ. May we today, and in the weeks to come, recognize that although time is out of joint, it's not our task to set it right. That has been done already. It's called resurrection. May we celebrate resurrection through our love of one another. And so, in celebration of this resurrection that we share with Christians everywhere, at all times, whether they are out of joint or not. Let us profess the faith that we share. I believe in one oh God, God, the Father Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, of all, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten the Son of God, born of the Father before all the ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us, for us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and He became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life for the world to come. Amen. So we bring before the Lord our prayers and petitions for this day. We ask the Lord to help us to truly see the risen and ascended Christ in our lives today, even in the midst of all the confusion we face. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who are involved in the work of finding a cure for coronavirus. For all those who are doctors and nurses who are treating those who are sick. And for all who do essential services, often at great risk to themselves. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who hold public office in church and state, that they may lead us with courage, wisdom, and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I invite you now just to spend a few moments bringing before the Lord your own prayers and petitions. Loving God, we bring before you all the prayers we make spoken and unspoken. 
We ask you to receive them and answer them according to your will, and we make all these prayers in the name of Christ the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name. For our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, with Booty our Archbishop, Duncan his auxiliary, with the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with the Spirit. Spirit. with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy really that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. 
His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Hear us, O God our Saviour, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole Church what has already come to pass in Christ her Head, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We have a special blessing. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you, for on this very day his only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend to where he is. Amen. Amen. May he be granted, may, may he grant that, as Christ after his resurrection was seen plainly by his disciples, so when he comes as judge, he may show himself merciful to you for all eternity. Amen. Amen. And may you who believe he is seated with the Father in his majesty, know with joy the fulfillment of his promise to stay with you until the end of time. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Mass is ended. Remain in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.